You know what I hate? I hate going to the grocery store. What are we all doing here at the same time? Do you really need six packs of granola bars? Do you need a bag of chocolate chips? Who in their right mind decides, let's go to the grocery store to buy pasta or cheese? Have you never heard of DoorDash? All right, anyway, here's the tale of how and why the first trailer for Elite Equipment Rentals was bought. The earliest I can remember having this idea was maybe uh, 2017. And the reason why I remember that was because I was out of work due to an injury and a buddy of mine named Devin, who now owns a uh, successful pressure washing company, uh, DMB Pressure Washing, I believe, posted an ad on his personal Facebook page that said something like, rent this dump trailer for like a hundred bucks. And I remember thinking at the time, that's a pretty good idea because you can sell the trailer, but it'll make money for you when you're not using it. And for the record, I own um, a few other businesses. Maybe one day I'll make a separate video on them. And I've worked full time since uh, like 2014. And I've had various like side hustles and schemes uh, since I was a tiny little fella. But uh, basically I'm addicted to the money and being out of work on this injury made me interested in this side gig, this trailer side gig, right? So a month or two went by and I was walking fine again. So I asked my buddy Devin about his trailer and if it's a uh, good business. And well, unfortunately, his trailer had gotten stolen. So uh, I was like, I was shocked, right? I think, I think it was a 10 by eight by four, five lug dump trailer, probably paid around $4,000 for it. And um, it was already stolen. I mean, it was just a couple of months went by. So at that time, it's safe to say that uh, I just decided against the dump trailer rental business, right? But I had thought about it like with, um, I, I always needed a, a car hauler for my cars. So, and I did have a car hauler for a while and I always would say like, man, I should rent this out so that it can make money for me. I just never got around to doing it. Anyway, fast forward to 2020, heart of the pandemic. I was working for a new company and had met a guy named Ricardo. Me and Ricardo, we share similar interests. One of the things that we share most in common is our love for money. So me and Ricardo would start to talk about how we would make and could make money on the side, uh, mostly because where we were at in our careers, um, we pretty much were capped out, you know? We wouldn't be making any more money anytime soon, and uh, jobs were becoming less desirable, you know, not getting along with our boss, schedule was kind of bad. Uh, I mean, it was a good job, but at the same time, it just wasn't uh, what I wanted to continue doing at the time. So me and Ricardo did what any reasonable and capable person would do with access to a few hundred bucks. We built a uh, mobile detailing, mobile car washing, you know, setup. And uh, I won't bore you with the details of our mobile car washing business, but basically just wasn't uh, for me, you know, mostly due to that previous injury I mentioned. Uh, I just couldn't handle the labor of washing cars in the summer heat. Uh, we did do it for a while and made a fair amount of money. Here's some photos of, you know, times time that we were washing the cars, but it just wasn't, you know, wasn't for me. So at the end of one day, uh, both of us soaking in sweat, we decided to stop, get some Chick-fil-A for dinner. I remember very clearly, we we're both talking about, you know, more money. And Ricardo said, and I quote, if I got fired today, I know exactly what I would do. Weed abatement. And I had never heard of weed abatement before. Uh, basically it was explained to me as like fire hazardous weed removal, you know, like you have a big property, but a bunch of weeds on the property, um, code enforcement will come and fine you big amounts of money if you don't get your weeds properly taken care of. So weed abatement company comes in, they scrape all your weeds out and uh, you don't get a fine. You just pay the weed abatement company. So, uh, he had, his dad lived in somewhere with an area with a lot of weeds, like a big piece of land in kind of like the desert kind of out here in Victorville. And uh, he was saying that his dad sometimes twice a year had to have somebody come out for a few hundred dollars and scrape the weeds. And that, you know, every single person up there has to deal with it in some way. A lot of them have their own tractors, but some people don't. So uh, long story short, we found a small Kubota tractor. It was like, uh, I don't, uh, I mean, here's a photo of it. I don't remember the name, but, uh, it had like a hundred hours. It was like a 2001. I mean, this thing was clean, uh, four wheel drive. I mean, it was nice. And we uh, started advertising our new service. So here's the ad that I put up. And uh, after about a month of advertising, we finally got a, a job, our first job. And uh, well, 
I, again, I won't bore you with the specifics, but let's just say this job didn't go very well. Um, at the end of the day, we had a pile of dirt and rock that we were supposed to, you know, we were responsible for getting rid of, right? I didn't think about that during the quote, you know, we're scraping this person's uh, yard and it's going to bring stuff up. We didn't really know. I didn't really know what I was doing, at least. I mean, I was just trying to make money. And uh, yeah, we had a big old pile of stuff that we you know, had to get rid of. So I took the old OBS. I had the 98 Silverado with me and uh, went down to the old handy dandy heavy D Home Depot and rented myself a small uh, small axle, eight by six by two, I think it is, dump trailer for about four hours. This cost me about $200. Uh, get back to the job, get the Kubota, load up all of the dirt and rocks into the back of the, the dump trailer, kind of pack it down pretty good. And don't get me wrong, I'll say this now, like it wasn't, I wasn't sagging. Uh, the truck didn't really have that hard of a time pulling it. I don't know, I just, this, you know, it kind of surprised me. You know, I pull up on the scale at the landfill and they want a $400 deposit and I hadn't been to the landfill in a while you know I don't go to the landfill often before this so like $400 deposit you sure like 400 buckaroos okay whatever and uh we had to go up into the landfill like we had to go up like a it was like a 15 degree grade I mean it was steep and uh you know two-wheel drive gasser heavy you know trailer and uh, I was, I'm surprised we made it. Finally got up the little hill and uh, well, the stupid thing wouldn't lift, right? So then we're in there like shoveling and kind of pressing the button and both of us push really hard to try to lift it up. And I don't know, maybe like after 20 minutes or so, finally got it to lift. So we go back down to the scale and the thing was like four and a half tons. I think it was like 4.8. I wish I still had the receipt. I do not, but I wish I did because... I mean, it was almost five tons. It was it was crazy. I mean, I, I spent like almost 300 bucks. I think I spent 300 bucks to empty it. And uh, I wait, have I mentioned that we bid and did this job at $400? I don't think I mentioned that yet. So I'm at 200 for the damn dump trailer, 300 on the damn landfill costs, and I bid the job at 400 bucks. So it was not a good it was not a good time for sure. We were negative on the job, and by this point, I was already done with the weed abatement business. I mean, I was like, I was hot. It was, I was sweaty. It was like May, right? I think it was, uh, I think it was May the 12th. I have a, I have my, my photos up right here. So May the 12th, 2021. Here's a photo. I don't, again, I don't have any pictures. Um, I don't have any pictures of this job, but um, I have a picture. I remember when, like, this is the morning I, I had it, May 12th. So um, it was hot. And it was uncomfortable, and I was dirty. I was filled with dirt because, you know, when you're scraping it, the freaking dust flies in you. And I just, yeah, I, I was done with the weed abatement business at this point. So looking back on it, I wish I would have kept the tractor because the thing was clean. And honestly, got a ton of use out of it. Um, I got my whole backyard, like, looking right, and I did a bunch of stuff with it. Uh, here's some photos of, like, my backyard when I was playing around with it, scraping it up and stuff. This whole area is generally normally filled with just weeds and stickers and um thorn the uh, thorn the uh, what are those things called i don't know man things like in old cartoons um and even ricardo got a lot of use out of it he took it up to his dad's and got all that cleaned up so it was worth it i mean not worth it for how much we spent for us to use it like personally because we didn't really have enough use for it but um i kind of wish i would have kept that thing anyway so this is at this point right we're at about a year um, with me and Ricardo's shenanigans, like since we met, started working together and doing other little things on the side. I mean, we did the car washing for a while. But anyway, that night after the weed abatement job um, in bed, my wife hits me with the, I know you had a long day, but I need you to find some time to clean the garage, right? And she doesn't really talk like that, but that's basically what she said. And you know, with me, injury and all, mostly laziness, uh, I hit up a guy, I hit up a couple of junk removal guys on offer up. And texts, pictures, whatever. Cheapest quote I had was like 450 bucks to come out and get the trash in my garage. And then I just started thinking about it, like 450 bucks. And these cats are going to be here like, like in a rush, you know, like they're going to be like, what kind of, okay, like what, what's the, what, what are we getting? What are we getting? Like what needs to go? What needs to go? And, um, you know, I got a bunch of stuff in my garage, like tools and I don't know, random shit. I just didn't want to be rushed. 
So then, you know, I'm laying in bed, whatever. And uh, the quote, the dump trailer rental from Homer and my buddy's business from 2017 all just kind of started running through my mind. And there it was. Uh, laid awake that night and basically did the whole business plan um, on my phone. So I told Ricardo about my, my new plan the next day at work. Uh, I told him that I would go home, wash the Kubota, post it on offer up for maybe a few thousand more than what we bought it for, and just see what happens, you know? Just, we'll just see. No, no, no promises yet. Like, let's just see, you know? See what we can do. And uh, he, he was agreed. He, he agreed. He's down. So, man, I'm telling you. Within an hour of posting the thing, I had somebody at my house cash with probably, I think it was like two, maybe 3000 over the asking price. Um, I, I, I literally, I got these photos right here. This is what it looked like after I washed it. And I remember the day I had all these messages. Um, I mean, literally like just imagine I barely, I don't, I, I really didn't even dry it. I think I barely just run something over the top. I'm sitting in my backyard down there with a chair and I post it and then I go like on Instagram or something for a few minutes and messages start rolling, rolling, rolling in. And, uh, so I start, I start playing with these guys. I'm like, look, I'm like, you know, this guy's offering me a thousand more than the asking price. So unless you can do that, sorry. And then, uh, before I knew it, like I said, some guy was back there at my house, probably within an hour and a half, um, with cash ready to go at first. He wasn't trying to pay cash, actually. At first, he wanted to give me a check. It was already like 7 p.m. I'm like, dude, I will not be taking a check from you right now. Sorry. And then this cat was like, all right, I got cash. I'm like, okay, let's do that. Why didn't you pull out the cash in the first place? Because on offer up, you said you were bringing cash, dick. Anyway, um, so it sold. It was kind of sad to see it go. I mean, like I said, I really wasn't expecting for it to go, right? It was only one day that I, it was a couple hours that it had been posted, but uh I don't know. By this point, I was convinced. You know, I've been doing a ton of research on the business. And uh, even like that day at work, right, I got nothing done. All I did was look at YouTube videos, read things online, on on Reddit, Facebook. I don't know, a bunch of different research I could do. And I have a bad habit about jumping into stuff. But if I'm being honest, um, with the money that we made on the tractor, I mean, we were definitely weren't losing anything to buy this dump trailer just to see if it would work, you know? And my, my thing, I have a ton of cars, so I don't mind money sitting in things because to me it's like an asset. So the way the dump trailers were, he couldn't find any of them used. So I figured if it, if it had to get sold, it would sell. So anyway, that night after it sold, uh, me and Ricardo, we met at Lucille's, had some barbecue, good dinner. You know, we figured it splurged a little because we just made some money. And uh, I gave him a share of the tractor. It was like, it was like 10 racks probably close to that. And, um, we just talked about the, the next step, right? Kind of our timeline. Uh, I knew that with me that within the next week, I wanted to have a dump trailer that we could, you know, rent out, um, not like to people, but like as a service, you know, and then I knew within a month, you know, that I wanted to be at, you know, let's say 10 rentals a month. And then, um, I said, you know, within two months, I want to, you know, I want to quit my job if I can. And then I even said like, oh, within three months, like, you know, I want to, I want to buy a brand new truck and I want to buy a couple more. So, um, we both kind of agreed, kind of aligned on our, on our timelines, on our 30, 60, 90 day plans. So uh, a few days later, we spent a whole day driving around looking at, uh, these trailer manufacturers or shop, basically shopping for a dump trailer. Uh, real quick, shout out to my cousin, Joe, cause he let me borrow his truck to do the driving. And what do you know that when he let me borrow um, he let me borrow his damn truck. I broke the volume button on the radio and his radio didn't work for like six months. So sorry about that, Joe. Sorry about that, man. Anyway, uh, after driving around all day, uh, we really didn't find anything that good. And all the trailers that we looked at were really expensive. They were like, like $15,000. And after this whole weed abatement thing, I just wasn't trying to spend that much. Um, it, let, let me be clear. I, I just said like, we didn't find anything that good. Like they were good quality, sure. They were they were great quality, and they, they were able to support a ton of weight, and I don't know, they're they're really thick and and heavy, and I don't know all this shit. But it just really wasn't what I was looking for, because my thing was is I'm trying to do this on the low, I'm trying to do this on the cheap. And my buddy Devin had spent like four thousand on his, so I was like, man, why am I going to spend fifteen grand if there's you know some for four thousand? Obviously, I didn't think about the cost of steel and all that, and everything that happened around this time of COVID. But uh, you know, we're looking and. 
couple days go by and Ricardo found this guy on offer up uh, right down the street from where we worked actually, like literally minutes, probably walking distance. So uh, I brought the old OBS to work one day and we went to go look at it. Um, for the price, we both decided that it was worth it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that day we got it for just less than like eight, eight grand out the door, maybe right at eight. And um, that was with the tarp kit. It wasn't with like a spare tire or, um, or a toolbox. So that was on May 19th, 2021. Um, the first one that we have right here, this one, here are photos of it, you know, the day that we bought it or the, the first rental. And uh, here's a photo of, you know, obviously what we have, what we have it now. Um, this first one is made by True Weld Trailers in Rialto, California. And it's a uh, 12 by eight by four with two 7,000 pound axles, not the 6,500 pound or 6,000 pound, but two 7,000 pound axles. Um, it's derated. Uh, it has a GVWR of 9999, 999, yep, 9999. And it has electric brakes uh, on the rear axle, uh, flush mount taillights, and uh, what, 12,000 pound hydraulic ram. I don't know, A-frame style jack, cheap tires, shitty tires that they come with. Uh, it doesn't have a Bobcat kit or anything like that. Uh, no, no ramps. Um, I mean, honestly, that's that's about it. It does not have an adjustable like a uh, coupler. You know, I think you guys see in the videos and stuff. It's just that coupler size or not size, but uh, like up and down, like some of them have. One of our trailers has one that goes up and down. Um, honestly, that's it. It was a box that hydraulically dumped that we could leave at people's house for almost half the price of a name brand trailer, right? And uh, that's what we want. Luckily, that's what we got. Luckily, it's worked out. Um, it's worked out well. It's worked out even though we didn't buy one of these uh, name brand fancy trailers. Uh, you know, this trailer has been through a lot. It's the first one. It's been the one that I've abused the most because every time I don't know about what the outcome will be, I say, oh, use this trailer because it's already thrashed. Um, I did end up bending the frame a little bit on this trailer. Uh, I don't really have a good photo of, of how it's bent. I mean, you can maybe see in this picture here, I'll kind of zoom in, but really, uh, it, it kind of bowed in the middle. So now the top of the box and the front just has about an inch gap. Like it doesn't sit flush anymore. And, uh, I remember, you know, I, I remember doing that and maybe that's a, a story for another video, but I had about. 20,000 pounds worth of dirt in it and uh, it was it was terrible it was a long couple days we broke two uh, hitches uh, an off-brand hitch that was rated for 10,000 pounds and a, a B&W hitch um, like the the foldable one or whatever uh, it was it was it was that definitely was a testing time for me in this business um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's basically it. This is the story, you know, this is the story of why and, and how this first trailer was bought for Alita Quim Rentals, me and Ricardo doing it together at the time, still doing it together, but you know, um, would you like to know what it was like getting our first customer or would you like to know why and when we bought that second trailer, uh, third, fourth trailer? Uh, would you like to know mine and Ricardo's involvement and relationship now a full year later? If you do, like, subscribe, and let me know what you'd like to see down in the comment section, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.